Hello everyone and welcome to uh, my second tutorial, or tutorial 1.1 of modelling for uh, Armour 3 primarily. You can be using it for other games as well. However, when it comes around to configging, I will only be taking you Armour 3 because it's one of the ones I know. Um, first of all, thank you ever so much for anyone that has been following uh, the tutorial so far. Thank you for the feedback and all the likes and stuff I've been receiving. It's been really, really useful. Um, it really has allowed me to do a lot of different things. From City Life RPG. Uh, what else I would like to say is that apart from all the feedback, um, you know, especially some of them stand out, um, I wanted to bring up the fact that um, signing up for the student version of 3ds Max, um, I think I mentioned it before, but um, as I say, if you can use Blender along with these tutorials, it's just going to be slightly different. Um, but I highly recommend you use 3ds Max. You can use the student version as long as you are learning the program um, and as long as you're not using it for industry, um, which making mods for games doesn't really count. Um, so, as I say, as you can see here, today tutorial 1.1 is the basics of 3ds Max interface and the, tool, uh, and the tools it contains. Uh, so, what we can do is we can load up 3ds Max and you will see that uh, when you load up first time, you'll actually get an option for. Uh, classic or architecture I believe and you want to select classic and then when it loads up it will be in a program a bit that will look like this and this will be your starting window so uh, you have a different set of startup templates and you also have your recent files um, for example I have an EMT base I've been working on uh, you have different things like obviously the sample scene things like that uh, we're just going to close that and this is the, this is the uh, template you have to use so, what have we got here that we can use? Well, first of all, on the top row up here, we can see we have the undo and the redo buttons. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, we've got selecting links and unlink. These probably won't be used to, uh, too much. Here you can see we've got select object, select name, rectangular selection, and window crossing. Uh, these are just selecting different parts of your model. Uh, we tend to not to touch these and leave them the same. Then we have select and move when we make an object, select and rotate, and select a uniform scale, and select and pe uh, place. These can also be activated by using W, E, R, and I believe T. So uh, you can use those for different things. A few of these controls uh, are not going to be too necessary. One of these things here, things like snap toggle, angle snap, uh, percentage snap. For example, angle snap will we use quite a lot when we're rotating. For example, by 90 degrees, you want it to snap. Otherwise, you can be rotating it to 80.0 or something. Oh, sorry, not 80.0, you'd be putting it like 80.72 and 90.24, whereas you might want it at, uh, you might want it at 90, etc. Uh, we move on to the mirror and align tool, which obviously allows you to mirror uh, images. They will be more used when we come on to making things like cars um, and possibly clothing, where you might want to mirror one side to the other when you're making meshes rather than having to do the same side equally. Whereas something like a house tends to be the left side of the house is different to the right. Um, I mean, we might you might use it for some situations, uh, but we tend to not use it for house modeling. Uh, we move over to a few other irrelevant tools for us at the moment, but then we move over to the material editor and the render setup. Uh, material editor, for example, will open up a window for making materials. It uh, seems a bit confusing, but I will go over that in the time that's needed. The other tools we want to be worrying about is on the right hand side. To create an object, uh, you, be, you want to be on the sunshine, I call it the sunshine and the blue rainbow. So the sunshine will give you the option to create tools, which we have lots of different things. We have splines, lights, standards. Uh, but we, the main thing we want to be on is under geometry, because we're making a geometry object. You can also go under create, and you've got a list of them here. Uh, or you can use the drop down menu on the right. So for example, if I want to create a box, I click the box. I draw the box. So it draws the shape first. And then when you do it again, it will do the height. And on the right hand side here, we can see it's generated things, for example, the name of the box, uh, the color of the box. If we click that, we can change the color of the box to uh, a few different things. 
uh, this is just a placeholder color it's not going to be what the texture is if you put it in game it will always come out as grey because it's not textured um, also you've got some parameters here you can change uh, so say if I wanted it 100 tall or 100 in length I might want it 50 in width and I might want it at 5 in height and you can change that uh, under modify tools you would get the similar thing what we will be doing is uh, we will be changing it to a poly and by that you have a right click menu with a lot of different tools and at the bottom we will click convert to and convert to editable poly this gives us a bunch of new options under the blue rainbow the modify tab there is a hell of a lot of modifier lists some of these we'll use some of these we won't but uh, we get onto those when they are needed for example cloth could be useful for curtains uh, watching obviously the poly count and turning to mesh UV unwrap we'll definitely be using another thing to watch out for is this is a few different menus and you can see we have top, front, left and perspective. What I like to do is I like to pick one of them, press Alt and W and it will bring it up into one window and you can press Alt and W to close it back down. On this one, if you select the right one, you are then able to have it in one bigger screen. If you select the object, you will go back to the options. thing to note is when you change to an editable poly, it will only do it for that one object on the left hand side. Uh, this is where you get the list of all of your objects um, that you've created. Uh, in your actual work plane, you have perspective, which you can view from cameras if you have any, lights if you have any, but you can also uh, go through all of these different things. And as you can see, quite self explanatory, you can have T for top, B for bottom, F for front, and L. So if I press those, T for top, B for bottom, F for the front, and L for wide, uh, left, sorry. The actual controls for moving the camera are Alt and middle mouse button to rotate and you can also use Control and middle mouse button to actually move it around. Um, so, you know, camera controls aren't too difficult. As I say, Alt and middle mouse button to rotate, right and middle, uh, sorry, Control and middle mouse button to move. So control and middle mouse button to move, Alt and middle mouse button to rotate. Um, so that's all your camera stuff. We also have Realistic. Uh, sometimes for housing you don't want all the shadows on so you can put it on shaded and it will just keep it like that you can also put it on consistent shadow uh, colours which will just get rid of shadows completely uh, we also have edged faces uh, which you can also use to, you can also put F4 on that means the lines on the edge of all of the faces will be highlighted so it's easier to see so it's recommended you use that you've also got things like uh, wireframe which will give you an extra bit of a view. I tend to keep it on shaded and um, line tool. So over onto the right hand side with all, all of the tools we have. Um, we'll start off with the red selection tools. First one is vertex which is quite sim uh, simple. You have uh, the edges and the vertexes of the object. For example, if you wanted to select an object, you can either go over to it and left click if you wish to select multiple, you hold down control, or you can draw a box. As I say, just by holding down left click and dragging. If I wanted to select all points uh, around a certain part, it doesn't really work well with uh, vertex select, but I can go over to edge select. Say if I wanted to select this line here, and this line here, but I also wanted to select all in that loop, I can hold down control to select the multiple and press shift and left click and you'll see that it's selected them all. Uh, if the grid gets annoying you can press G to get rid of it and obviously G to get it back. So that's vertex tool. The next one is border which this currently doesn't have any borders because it doesn't have any open faces that's what you use border tool for. With the next one is polygon which is for actually selecting the faces and the last one is actual uh, element so it selects the whole thing or selects part of the object that's a separate part 
So the different tools that we have available, these are the things I will be going through. But um, for example, thing to note is that Edge Tool will have different tools available to you than Vertex, than Polygon, than Element, and Border, etc. But when you scroll down, you have ed Edges. These are all of the things you can do to the edges. Obviously, you have to have the edge selected. Same as on face, edit polygons, edit geometry to edit the whole shape. So if I stay on this one, um, obviously if I scroll down, I can scroll down with the mouse button or I can hold middle mouse button and drag. Uh, so I can sort of scroll that way, depending on how you enjoy it, uh, enjoy it and like, wish to do it. Uh, the next thing to note is that where you have tool, say for example I wish to extrude, I can click extrude and it will then give me the tool. So I can hold down left click and drag and I can do it that way. Or I can undo that and I can use the settings box which is the little uh, box next to it for all of the tools. If I click that it will give me an extra few things so I can extrude by group if I select multiple faces that is, I can do my local poly, uh, local normal, or I can do by each individual polygon. There's lots of different ways that will come uh, be explained better as we go through. And then we also have a height, which you can enter in a value, or you can drag. And this is the same for all, uh, all different things that you can see, extrude along spleen, uh, intramed, flip, doesn't have one. But insert, for example, does same. You can insert uh, bevel. You can insert one makes it go higher, one makes it go in and out. Uh, so that would explain some other tools. A lot of these tools might seem confusing, but we will explain most of them as we go through. When you add an effect or a modifier, it will also get listed here in this box. Currently we only have the editable poly, which we can select. And if I added another one of long here, it would get added to it and, uh, above, a bit like a Photoshop layer. Um, and then you'll be able to work on your model around that. So if you wanted to go to a certain one, you would be able to. If you wanted to go to a certain part on this left hand side, you could also. If I now create a second box, and once again, convert it to an editable poly. You'll notice that if I use the element tool and select this one, it works. But if I select this one, it won't let me. That's because I have only selected this one over here on the left hand side. Uh, you are able to hide it using the light bulb, but it still won't let you select it. Because you're still on that one. So what you need to do is click on box one, and you are now able to look at box one, control box one, but you're not allowed to, uh, oh, so it won't let you use box two. If you want to edit a certain uh, certain aspect that you have in your model on the left hand side, you could go through and hide the layers. However, if you, if you have a lot of layers on different things like doors, windows, etc., you don't want to have to go through and do that. You can simply right click and isolate selection, it will zoom in on the selection and it will let you do all your work. You see you could edit this one. So I could uh, work about with this one. I might want to get this edge and bring it in a bit. And then if I right click again, end isolation, you'll see it's all been done. The other boxes stay where it is and it's not been changed and messed around. Um, and that's the, that's a few simple controls. The similar way of when you isolate and it zooms in on the object. If I'm over here and I'm not sure where my object is, if I press Z, it will zoom in on the object. If I'm like this, Z, there you go, zooms in, Z again, makes it fit the screen. If I wanted to zoom on the blue uh, purple box, once again, make sure I've selected it on the layer and it will move around. Well, I think that's it. I think I've explained as much as I possibly can. Uh, I will be going through individual things, so I will start off um, as slow as I possibly can and try and explain every time if I press a button how I do this and that. 
Uh, I would like to say that if you do have any questions or uh, bugging things, please don't uh, please don't think that you can't come and ask me. Um, you know, send us a PM uh, if you see me on Teamspeak, or if you don't, uh, and you you can put a comment on the forum post, or you can put a comment on the uh, YouTube video. Um, <coughs> Either way, I will try and get back to that as soon as possible uh, with the best response I can. Some of them I might have to cover in the next video, uh, which, as we can see, the next video will be where we actually start to model the house. Uh, this will be where we start to put the shapes in. Uh, I start to explain a few of the basic tools. Uh, it will mainly be making the shape of the house. Then we'll start to understand the limitations of what we can do to our model and what armour in particular allows us to have. Then we'll start adding detail because we'll know the limitations to what detail is we can add. And then we'll start adding detail, uh, interior. Then we will actually start adding textures and things like that after because that obviously comes last. You have to finish your model before you can do your textures. Well, thank you ever so much for watching guys. As I say, thank you ever so much for the uh, feedback you gave me in the last year. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And also, don't hesitate to um, suggest any improvements I can make as well, or uh, feedback. It's all really useful. Uh, it's a long time since I've done tutorials, especially on the, something as difficult as this. Uh, some people are beginners. I want to take it as slow as possible and uh, try and help people who uh, want to learn to help out. So uh, thank you for so much for watching guys, uh, if you liked it, like the video, uh, I guess, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel, gives you an update on when the videos are uploaded, uh, you could also follow the um, follow the forum group, um, but obviously liking and subscribing to the Facebook, uh, sorry, the YouTube channel will give you a better understanding of when the videos go live. Uh, thank you ever so much for watching guys, hope you enjoyed and uh, yeah. Good luck with your models.